Hi you guys, it's Dave here from Raptor Exotics and you guys at Stand and Span, most of you guys know me because I tend to come in once or twice a year to cover some of your nature based topics. So you'll know me maybe from rainforest talks and my owl talks. Most of you have met Pop, my barn owl I'm sure. Now one of your teachers has asked me to do a short video for you guys. No particular subject. I'm sure they're going to make you write about it, you know what your teachers are like. But I'm going to do a random selection of things to show you some of our animals and what we've been up to. During this lockdown, this coronavirus, I can't go to school because you guys have got too many germs. I don't want them. What have I been doing? Well, I've been really busy with my reptiles. I've moved them to a new reptile room, all my snakes and lizards. I've got a new room now. And one thing that fascinates me about nature is you can always learn stuff. And at the moment, I'm really learning, well, every summer really, about moths. And most people think moths are horrible brown or grey things that go in your hair. Usually bats follow them. That's not true. In the whole of Britain, we haven't even got 60 different kinds of butterflies. We've got 59 species of butterfly that come to England, uh, to Britain, England, Wales, Scotland and so on. Guess what? There's more than two and a half thousand different kinds of moths around. Some of them come out in the daytime, just like some owls do, but most moths come out at night. What's the special word for nighttime animals? Hope you guys remember. A moth trap catches moths. Have a look at this. A weird thing. You can make your own a lot more simpler than this, but this moth trap here has a special light. Moths are attracted to light. You guys know that. This light it's not very bright, it just gives out ultraviolet light. And moths love that, they can't resist it. And they fly closer and closer and closer, they pump into the light bulb, and then they fall into the trap. Have a look. And it's a funnel. And when they fall through the hole, they can't get back out. And inside are lots of comfy egg boxes, would you believe? And they go to sleep and snuggle down in there. And in the morning, or the next evening, we can have a look and see what kinds of moths are flying around our garden every single night. And different moths come out at different times of the year. So you often get lots of the same kinds. Two and a half thousand moths, different kinds in Britain. I'm only learning about them. I might be old, guys, but you can always learn new stuff about nature. Let's have a look what we've got. I don't know what kinds are in here. We haven't opened it yet. And normally we open it outside in case they fly away and wake up. There's so many birds singing in my garden. We've had to come in here. There's one in the house singing. We've come inside. I think when my wife comes home from work, she's going to be cross. There's going to be moths living in my house everywhere. Let's have a look inside. So we'll take the lid off. But before we do, look in here. Let's have a look at these. These are pale tussock moths. I don't know if you can see them. Can you see that in there? They're asleep now because they're moths. They're nocturnal, aren't they? What's underneath here? There's three in here, look, look. One, two, three. Now, these guys, huh, look under here. Look at this beauty. Look at that. That's a kitten moth. These guys, outside where they sleep normally, Use their beautiful patterns so they can blend into their surroundings so birds can't see them while they're asleep in the daytime. What's that word called when animals use their shape and colour to blend into their surroundings? What's that word? Now, let's see what's in here. I will not know what they're called. Let's have a look. So we're taking the lid off. Look at this. Look at this beauty. Look at its antennae. I don't know if you can see its big antennae. Big, long antennae, like big combs. We know that's a male moth. He uses his big antennae for smelling with. He's not trying to just smell where his favourite flowers are so he can have a drink of nectar. No way. He's actually trying to smell where the girl moths are. Girl moths give off special perfume into the night air. His antennae have such a great sense of smell. He can find a moth maybe a mile away, a girl moth. He really wants a girlfriend. They lay eggs. Oh, 
Butterflies are flying away. Butterflies are moths, lay eggs. And what hatches from the egg? What's that funny thing? They're very hungry. And that very hungry thing, what's it called? They turn into a chrysalis, a pupa or a cocoon. Inside there, that thing, you remember what it's called, completely changes over a few weeks or months and hatches out of the chrysalis into an adult. Let's see what's in here. You don't just catch moths, we've got flying ants here. Flying ants have been out at night. <gasps> Look at this beauty. Type of carpet moth. Remember, in the wild it would be sleeping on something like this. We're gonna show you a picture of one in a minute on their natural habitat. Look at these. Oh, look at this, guys. This is a maybug because it's a beetle. Let's get some light on there. Go around the side there. It's a beetle that comes out in May and it flies around at night with a big buzzing sound. Some people call them maybugs and the teachers at your school, they'll know them as cockchafers. Really? Let's pop them down there. Look at them, we've had a bumper catch. Look at these, this is a, a muslin moth. Look at these, some are tiny, some are beautiful. Look at the shape of that one. Let's pop them there, keep them asleep. Because we're gonna leave them on here in the trap and we'll let them go tonight. Look at this one asleep in here. That's kind of what people think of a moth, isn't it? Just a kind of brownie grey thing. But they're fascinating things. Very common species here. Can you see those, camera woman? Mm -hmm. Oh, one's got away. Oh, they're in here. Look at this one's patterns. Hang on. Sorry, we woke you up. Look closely at the patterns, guys. Another one the same kind in there. Don't squash them. Look at this one. Look at the patterns. Can you see that? Really, really pretty. Oh, look, a white ermine moth, guys. How pretty is that? Absolutely beautiful. They're all living in your gardens, guys, and around your school field. You just don't see them because they're nocturnal. Oh, look, a little pug moth. There's thousands of kinds of these, or hundreds of kinds. Tiny little thing, look how small it is. Beautiful things. Nothing on there. I'm trying to find you guys a real giant moth, but I don't think we've caught any today. Some moths are huge. More small ones. Another little muslin moth. Moths are massively important. Not only are there lots of different kinds, there's lots of them flying around at night. Some of the bats feast upon them. Birds eat them if they can find them. Oh, look at this beauty here. And of course, the moth caterpillars eating the leaves on the trees are very important food for birds. Oh, this is a really pretty one. Look at that. Oh, look, another cockchafer or oh, maybug. Go on, then, off you go. Oh, look. Another kitten moth. Look at this camouflage. Wow. We're just gonna cut to a picture of a couple of the moths that we found on the tree near the trap. Oh, there's another white ermine moth in there. And you can see how camouflage they really are in nature. Take a look at this.
Guys, before you go, before you go, I just found the last moth in the trap. <gasps> it's something I've wanted to find in my garden for ages. I've never caught one. It's not rare, but we don't get them much here. It's called a buff tip. A buff tip. Because the tip of it is buff coloured. Now, this is the most amazing camouflage moth. It sits on a twig and its head end here looks exactly like a snapped off tiny twig. It's camouflage in the wild is so good. Finding one of these guys in the wild asleep, oh, you'd, be, you'd have to have eagle eyes. Have a look at it. Look at the pattern. To me, it's beautiful, but of course, it's all about, all about camouflage. So this guy looks exactly like a snapped off twig. What a find. I love looking at moths. There's so many. You always find new species. And I have to go away and learn about them. That's what I love about nature. You never stop learning. People have told me they're bored in lockdown. Guys, if you've got a garden and you're bored, just get outside and see what you can find. Poke about in the nooks and crannies. Find yourself a, I don't know, an earwig or a spider or something fascinating. Have a look at these moths that we were talking about. Quickly look at some other camouflage ones. I'm going to show you one or two of our animals. See you in a minute. Welcome back, you guys. Here's a relatively new snake of mine. This is an Australian black-headed python, and it lives in northern Australia and Queensland. It tends to live on the ground, under rocks, and in quite sandy places, and uses its pointy nose to burrow into the soil quite a bit as well. In the wild, they eat snakes and lizards. Now, I'm not feeding them those things in captivity, and in captivity, he eats frozen mice and rats like most of my snakes. I thawed them out first, of course. He doesn't like ice cream. This python can get to about three metres long. And I love it. It feels lovely. What you guys can't tell, because I'm not there at your school with you like normal, is this snake's got incredibly soft scales. Small, soft scales. And he feels, I don't know, what can I describe him like? A very soft piece of leather like your mum's handbag strap, maybe. Absolutely lovely. This beautiful camouflage pattern is absolutely gorgeous. But look at his head. The black-headed python is well known. He looks like he's dipped his head into some black ink or black paint. Look how shiny it is and how different it is from the rest of him. Now, like most snakes, his eyes are okay. They're not brilliant, really. But he keeps on sticking his tongue out. Look at this, can you see this? Tasting and smelling with his tongue. Sensing the world around him by touch, taste and smell, all part of his tongue, and a special thing in the roof of his mouth called the Jacobson's organ, and his tongue, both ends of his tongue, poke into a separate hole in the roof of his mouth. That's linked to his brain, and he can work out the tiniest amounts of smell and taste and track down where his prey might be. All the animals we work with are born here in England. They're not stolen from the wild, they're captive bred animals. And the Australian black-headed python, not many people breed them here in the UK. So they're quite hard to get, they're very expensive, and they're hard to get. So while this girl here, this guy, he's a boy, he's growing bigger, we've actually recently bought him a little girlfriend. And in about three years, fully grown adults in three years hopefully we'll get some black headed python eggs and maybe come back and show you guys some tiny baby black headed pythons but he's growing huge he's doubled in size in just one year have a look at him have a look at this guy absolutely beautiful the australian black headed python very skinny compared to the pythons you guys probably have seen before. This species is a little bit different to most pythons and it's certainly a lot more slender. But it's one of my favorite kinds of pythons. And his job, because some schools have actually been doing topics about Australia with Australian animals. So his job at schools is to go along so you guys can meet hold and stroke an Australian kind of snake 
absolutely beautiful. One of my favourites. Hold on, I've got one more kind of animal to show you. Actually, I can't show you them together. He'd eat them. Now, snakes aren't everyone's favourite pet. Owls are rubbish pets. But look at these guys. These are brilliant pets. This is Pickle. This is Chutney. And they're tame pet rats. We actually breed them here. For people that want to keep a super pet, they can always get one or two from us. And do you know what? You can't keep them on their own. They get lonely. They love to have friends. Now, when I say pet rats, some teachers and parents go, oh, disgusting. No way. I'll tell you what's disgusting. And you guys might have one. Pet hamsters. Pet hamsters. They smell of wee, they live on their own in the wild, why do they want you as a friend? They don't even like their own kind, they bite your fingers, I've had pet hamsters. <gasps> but these guys, pet rats, oh, these guys, they want to come out to play, they want to be your friend, they're much cleverer than any hamster, and you can train them to do all kinds of tricks, just like you can a dog. These guys, super brainy. And we love them here at Raptor Exotics. This one got a nip from his mum when he was a baby. Look, when he was a tiny baby, nipped him on the tail by accident. He's got a wonky tail. They grow about twice this size. Just like you children, you guys at school. Boy rats, a little bit smellier than the girls. But they're not really smelly as long as you clean them out. They eat anything. We feed them hamster food mixed with dried dog food. They like a bit of apple as a treat. And they're super fun. And I think a pet that actually wants to come out to play, because I think my snakes, they think, oh no, Dave, don't take me to school, there's too many children. <gasps> Not these guys. These guys would love to come to school and meet you. They just love to meet new friends. And they don't bite like hamsters do. Now, four weeks old, they're this long without their tails. And that's the age to start training them at the best. That's the age where they love to really meet new people and get to meet new friends and realise that us humans, we're cool. We're not going to hurt them. They even play with our dogs. Now, I think our dogs would like to eat them, but they're not allowed. And the rats seem quite cool with that. Look at this guy. Big ears, all the better for hearing with. Whiskers for feeling. A twitchy nose for sniffing and smelling. But little beady eyes, look at his beady eyes. Little beady eyes, not the best eyesight at all. A bit like a snake, really. They use their sense of smell. They've got whiskers as well to feel around. Pet rats. Your teachers might not agree. I don't think your parents will let you. But take it from me. They're the most friendliest, fun pets you guys could get. Absolutely for sure. They actually will sit on your shoulder while you play on your Xboxes. I don't even want you to play on your Xboxes. If you've got time to do that, get outside, look at some wildlife, but they would do that. They'll sit on your lap while you watch TV. Super cool pets. But of course, my owls and my snakes, they just like to eat them. Hi guys. Well, from myself and Georgia, who's filming this for you, here at Raptor Exotics, we hope this has livened your day up. We hope it's given you something to do, a bit of artwork, a bit of research, and a bit of writing about maybe at school. A fun topic, some fun animals, and most of you know, here we have got all kinds of animals and birds that we can bring in to see you. But we can't do that until this blooming bug has gone away. This coronavirus is kind of getting in the way a bit. But here, we're busy, we're lucky we live in the countryside, We've got dogs that we take for walks. So for us, it hasn't been too bad at all. And we hope it hasn't been too bad for you guys and you're enjoying being back at school. See you soon, guys. Bye for now.